What's going on all you beautiful and sexy people? This is Manufactured Opinion here bringing you some more Dark Souls 2 gameplay and today we are talking about how you can trade in your souls for super sexy and awesome boss weapons. Now it is a fairly long video, it is a multi-step process and I did want to make it as detailed as possible uh, so it's easy to follow. If you happen to reach certain sections in the game I will try to put um, links in the description so you can uh, skip over some of these sections of this of this video um, If you've already unlocked a certain area you can go ahead and check that link in the description um, to jump to that certain point to get um, Whether it be the certain item that you need whether you need to find the actual merchant um, And like I said you've unlocked that area. I'll try my best to, to put some good waypoints uh, in the description for your reference now you will have to fight um, I think of maybe three, three or four bosses. They're all fairly simple boss fights, so you can get access to this merchant uh, fairly early. Um, I mean, just I'm trying to think of all the boss fights. You have to fight the last giant, the pursuer, the dragon rider, um, the three sentinels. I don't think that's the correct name, but that's what I call them: the three sentinels and the three skeleton lords. Um, which are all fairly simple boss fights. I think the one you'll probably have the most difficult difficulty with is the three sentinels because they're a pain in my ass <clears throat> um, but anyways on to where I am right now I'm heading over to the Tower of Flame um, I actually had the woman that you're gonna need Lycia that you're gonna need access to later on which is why we're coming to the Tower of Flame um, she isn't actually there when you first show up near that contraption she's actually at the top of the Tower of Flame um, after you defeat the Dragon Rider. So it's essentially a straight shot from a jewel. You're just going to head down uh, through the sewers, through all these knights. Um, fight them if you want. I, I just like running by them. Uh, the Dragon Rider is a really, really simple boss fight, so you should have no problems with the fight. I'm uh, actually not even including that fight in this video. Um, if you push up all the little boners that pop up around the map, uh, you can get a larger arena to fight the Dragon Rider, which makes the fight a bit easier. But you can also not hit the little switches and actually make him fall off the cliff. And once you reach this area, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But after you defeat the Dragon Rider, Lycia is going to be up here looking out into the, the beautiful scenery. Uh, talk to her, make sure you exhaust all dialogue options, and then fast travel back to Majula, and she will show up next to that contraption that you uh, saw at the beginning of this video, and I actually had to make her move the path for 2,000 souls. Once you exhaust all dialogue options, she will be there for you to move the pathway. So once you get access to Lissy, you're going to want to head back to the contraption before the Tower of Flame that you saw at the beginning of this video. Pay her 2,000 souls and she will grant you access to what's called the Huntsman's Cops. Now if you don't know, that is the area that was actually in the beta. I didn't know that myself. I didn't actually play the beta because I got turned down by the troll that is Sony. Um, but my very well-versed and sexy mustachioed subscribers have told me that this is the area in the beta and it is a, uh, a very frustrating area to say the least. Um, this is actually where you fight the Executioner Chariot and you'll see coming up here that uh, <laughs> I actually died to the Executioner Chariot so many times that the enemies stopped spawning uh, <laughs> which is quite unfortunate um, It just shows you how much I suck at this game um, and I broke numerous controllers during that boss fight but uh, anyways you're gonna want to head to the Huntsman's Cops and it is pronounced cops. Uh, I googled it and Google told me it was cops. So I must be correct. Google must be correct. And the man actually had a very sexy voice. He went, cops. So that's, that's definitely how you pronounce it. But uh, anyways, you're going to want to head through here. Um, like I said, it is the area with the Executioner Chariot. If you decide to break off the path, I'm going to show you here. But the path I will be showing you here will be to the Skeleton Lords. Um, if you do, if you do want to take a, a detour to fight the Executioner Chariot and um, take five years off of your life, be my guest. Um, <laughs> you actually do get some sweet weapons if you have the Executioner's Chariot, uh, Executioner Chariot Soul. So it's definitely something to keep in mind as well. As you can see right here, there's all, there's usually a bunch of enemies here, but uh, like I said, I died way more than ten times, so they're not here anymore. But. You're going to want to run through this area, head to the top, <coughs> excuse me, head to the top. There will be a bunch of uh, thieves, rogues, whatever you want to call them. 
and there'll actually be this hobbit hut to the left with a lever in it. You're going to want to head to that hobbit hut, um, hit the switch, it'll lower the bridge. You'll actually see that the, the bridge is already lowered here, obviously, because I've been through the, uh, the area multiple times. Um, and just one thing to note, try to kill these guys with a little bit more efficiency and uh, finesse than I do here. <laughs> I just keep getting pooped on, almost died. And you actually see I get surprised bitch coming up here in a second. My hobbit hole! Yeah, watch this, watch. <laughs> scared the living shit out of me. And I should have knew he was going to drop, should have knew he was going to drop down because, or should have known, excuse me. Because um, I've been in there before, a couple of times. And this guy just blind, doesn't know what he's doing. But anyways, you're going to want to head across the bridge. And there will actually be a bonfire behind a locked gate. And there actually is a very MP, uh, very important NPC back there. Um, a very NPC important back there that you're going to want to exhaust all dialogue options with. So I'm actually going to show you where that key is uh, when we follow this pathway along the cliffside. Um, and I guess just one other thing to note, just in general, a general tip is always exhaust all dialogue options with the NPCs in this game. Um, for those of you that play Dark Souls and Demon Souls, obviously that's just that's second nature at this point. But uh, if this is your first Dark Souls game, definitely exhaust all dialogue options. It does... Um, progress certain storylines and certain quests uh, which give you access to certain items later on in the game. Um, this is actually a perfect example if you didn't talk to Lycia. Uh, there may be another way to get to get to Huntsman's Cops, I don't know of it. Um, this is the easiest way I've found which then gives you access to the um, Harvest Valley which is where we need to go to get the fragrant branch of Yore which is used to unpetrified petrified people um, there are multiple fragrant branches of yore in the game, but this is the one I found the easiest to get access to, only because you only have to defeat two bosses. Um, two fairly simple bosses, the Skeleton Lords and the Dragon Rider, as I've noted before. And I guess just to segue nice into uh, just some clips I have of the Skeleton Lords, just one thing to keep in mind is that once you kill a Skeleton Lord, a bunch of ads do pop up, so I found the best strategy is to kill one skeleton lord, kill all the little skeletons that pop up, then go ahead to the next skeleton lord and kill all the little skeletons pop up. Because the last skeleton lord that you kill, a bunch of hot wheel skeletons um, spawn, and it can become a pain in the ass. So, let, so let's see what that boss fight looks like. So I can see the fight with these sexy ass skeleton lords getting quite difficult if you are not patient. To me, this whole fight is all about patience. Using the pillars that you see here to your advantage, the most devastating attacks you'll see from the Skeleton Lords are that fireball. So use the pillars, crowd them around the pillars, g go in for a couple of hits, run back to another pillar. Uh, stay out of range of their melee attacks and just rinse and repeat. The only thing you have to worry about, which I mentioned earlier, is once you kill one of the Skeleton Lords, there will be a bunch of Skeleton uh, Soldiers. And then the last Skeleton Lord that you kill, that will actually be Hot Wheels Skeleton. So really all you have to do is just kite them around the room. Just keep running around the room. You'll be out of melee range of the Skeleton Lords, uh, the Skeleton Lords that are remaining. And you'll also be running around the room so there's no way in hell, no way in Skelly that they're going to actually hit you with any fireballs. So just run them around the room. Uh, just kill the, 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 um, the, the soldier skeletons or the skeleton soldiers when you can. And just rinse and repeat, guerrilla warfare style. If you're trying to rush through the fight, I definitely recommend that you at least keep one Skeleton Lord alive while you kill the, the remaining Skeleton Soldiers because, as I said, the Hot Wheel Skeletons will pop up and it was actually the most difficult portion of the fight for me. Uh, I think it's either three or four Hot Wheel Skeletons and they actually really pissed me off and I almost died as you'll see coming up here. Uh, I did not include the whole fight because it would make this video uh, pretty long. Like I said, this was the first time I fought the Skeleton Lords. Um, and I actually defeated them my first time, so you guys really should have no problem with, with this fight because I'm nowhere near good at this game at all. So if I can beat this fight the first time, you guys definitely can. So I don't want to hear any excuses. And please, just don't get reamed by Hot Wheels skeletons. Just please, do it for me. Okay, so once you send those sexy-ass skeletons to the grave, you're going to want to head over to the Harvest Valley, which is out a doorway on the opposite side of the room where you fought, fought the, the three skeletons, the three skeleton lords. It's not through the same doorway you came into that room. Um, then you're just going to want to follow the pathway and go all the way to Harvest Valley. 
And this is where we're going to find our branch to depetrify the merchant that will trade us boss souls for sexy ass boss weapons. So what you're going to want to do is head down the pathway, head across this, head across this poison cloud. Uh, make sure you have some poison moss or some common fruit with you as this will help tremendously getting through all the poison stuff until you're able to burn a windmill later on in the level and get rid of a lot of the, the poison gases that are in the level. But essentially what you're going to want to do is head to a pathway till you get this door. This doorway, doorway will be shut. You're going to want to head up the ladders to the right um, and you'll be able to hit a switch that will open this door. Make sure you defeat all the enemies. Head to the right here and access this bonfire. Now, we'll use this bonfire as sort of a hub to try to get the fragrant branch of yore, depending on what your what your goals are here. Because the branch is behind four undead douchebags that uh, can be pretty difficult to kite around the area to try to kill them all. So if you're just looking to, to get the branch and maybe come back later, I'm just going to show you exactly which which uh, wooden panels you need to smash through in order to get access to the branch. It's right on this ledge here. Make sure you grab that. And then we're actually going to head over to the forest of the fallen giants from here. So just hit the bonfire that you just uh, rested at previously. Okay, so right now I am at the second bonfire at the forest of the fallen giants. If you haven't accessed this area yet, I will put an uh, annotation in the video linking you to the, my forest of the fallen giants video so you can get a better understanding of the layout of this area and what exactly you need to do in order to get access to the area I'm about to run to now. But just to give you a brief synopsis, what you have to do is get through this area and defeat the last giant, which will get you the soldier key, which will open the door I just ran through now. And what happens when you get to the top of these steps is you have to fight the pursuer. Once you defeat the pursuer, you'll actually get access to a nest in this giant sexy-ass eagle with a beautiful mustache will actually pick you up and carry you to the Lost Bastille. Now there is another way to get to the Lost Bastille through the No Man's Wharf, which is actually easier in my eyes, but it puts you on a separate section of the Lost Bastille that's a lot further away from the Ruined Sentinels, which is the bosses that we need to defeat in order to get um, in order to get to the merchant that has our boss weapons. And I was actually just checking out this tree here. I didn't realize that you could uh, fondle it a little bit because it looks exactly like the last giant boss. So that's definitely something interesting. Don't know what to do with that yet. I'm sure you guys do. Or, you know, two months from now, I'll be getting comments as, as to what to do with it. But for now, just jump in the nest and make sure Sexy Ass Birdie brings you to the Lost Bastille. So at this point, we should have defeated the Dragon Rider, the Last Giant, the Pursuer, and the Three Skeleton Lords. And this is going to be the most difficult portion of this guide because we have to fight the Ruined Sentinels, which is a pain in the ass um, and can get very frustrating. But I'm going to try to give you some pointers and hopefully guide you through the boss fight, at least what worked for me, what worked well for me. I am a melee class, so what worked well for me may not work well for you, but... Um, what we're going to want to do is head over here and kill some of these jailers first. As you can see, I actually died here. He poked me off the cliff, uh, and I was extremely pissed off. Um, but the reason why we want to kill him, even though we're not going in that direction, is because he can actually uh, snipe you out uh, and start following you over here. And there will be quite a few enemies that will be attacking us in this portion. So we want to make sure we don't get uh, snuck up on and try to give us the best possible opportunity to get through this area. So when you open this door... Make sure that you poke your head in just a little bit and then run back out. If you go too far in, you'll actually pull all of them. There's like, I think there's nine or ten of these swordsmen and they are extremely annoying. You actually see I have quite a difficult time defeating them because as I've said before, I suck at this game. But um, <laughs> I'm just trying to help somebody out so they can be better than me. But um... You don't want to poke your head in. Poke your head in again and grab these two. And then when you take a left, which is uh, the direction you need to go to to get to the Ruined Sentinels, you'll actually pull four or five of them, which is um, extremely annoying to say the least. It, it's frustrating. I recommend just trying to get one by itself if you can. See, look at, yeah, there's four of them. Their attacks are really, really slow. But since there's so many of them, it's really hard to get like close to one and, and try to defeat him. And see, so you get hit by the one right behind him. It's just a pain in the ass. So I recommend just trying to get get one, ugh, or just be better at the game than I am. But 
once you beat these guys, you're going to head down the left. There's going to be a, a very long hallway, and you're going to drop down into the bosses that are the Ruined Sentinels. Now, be prepared when you drop down through the Fog Gate, because you will be attacked right away by a Ruined Sentinel that is up on the ledge you drop down on. Um, and he will actually hit you for a lot of damage before you even have a chance to react. So it's definitely something you're going to want to keep in mind when you head through this Fog Gate. And what you're going to want to do, essentially, is defeat that Sentinel that you drop down on. There will be two left, and all you're going to do is kind of the same thing as the Skeleton Lords. Just patience, 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 guerrilla warfare, um, and just making sure that you stay out of the range of their attacks. Heal when you need to, even if it's, even if you're being a bit conservative, if you know you're wasting some Estus. See, he attacks you right there, and <laughs> I got absolutely fucking clobbered. Um, but essentially what you're going to want to do is just try to defeat this guy on this ledge. If you drop down, the other two will drop down on you, and you can basically call a game over from there. Um, <laughs> there's just way too hard to fight three of these things at once. And they'll actually, the cool thing is, they'll actually throw their shields eventually, which um, obviously helps helps when you're attacking. They won't be, they won't have their shield up as much. You'll be, you'll be doing more damage. But you definitely want to defeat Yahim first. I don't know if Yahim is uh, the one that's always there. Um, but they got some pretty cool names. It's the three DJs. They have DJ names. Alessia, Rika, Yahim. Definitely DJ names. And see, he'll, you can actually hit them off the cliff and they'll actually jump back up and do that to you. <laughs> and it's really hard to dodge. So just make sure you try to stay in a corner. They don't just... A lot of the times you can hey, stay in one area and move and then they'll... Uh, and then they'll jump to that area, but they're actually really good at following you. So it's something to keep in mind as well. And it's a failed drop attack. <laughs> and I almost died. Uh, I don't even know how I survived this fight. But once you defeat Yahim, uh, assuming it's Yahim that's up on the cliff when you first drop down, <clears throat> the other two will drop down, and you will have to fight both of them. As you can see, he threw his shield there, and then eventually the other sentinel will throw his shield as well. And all you're going to do is just wait for them... They telegraph their t their attacks. Um, all you do is wait for them to attack, go in, grab a hit on them, come back out. If if it feels like the other one's going to attack when you're attacking the one that just attacked, then if that makes any sense, then uh, just play a conservative. There is no, no world records just yet to be had, especially if this is your first playthrough. So uh, just, just take it easy, take it slow, and should, you should have no problem defeating the last two sentinels. So once you defeat the three jackasses, it's really a straight shot from there. You've done the hardest part of this guide. You just, we're just going to want to run through the rest of the area. Make sure you interact with these um, portions of the wall as there are secrets behind them. And by interact, I don't mean hit them with your, your pointy device or roll into them. You're actually going to want to hit your action button, whether that be A or X, depending on what console you're playing on. Or I guess the, the little clicky thingy if you're on PC. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I completely forgot about that. Ambushed by Explosion Man. God damn it, I hate those guys so much. Oh my god. I just thought of a brilliant idea. When this game comes out for PC, they need to skin those guys as the actual Explosion Men from the video game. Oh, uh, and Mrs. Explosion. Explosion Woman. Miss Explosion. Oh my goodness. That is an amazing idea. Somebody make that happen. I'm not I'm not smart enough to make that kind of shit happen. But please skin those guys as explosion men. I will give you the biggest hug in the world. Count on it. But uh, anyways, like I was saying, just a straight shot from the bonfire to the merchant that we want to trade our boss souls with. There's a few a uh, few jailers, a through a few explosion men. Actually the hardest part you'll encounter is once you reach the room with um with our merchant, there is about seven explosion men, so it's kind of difficult. Just make sure that you're, you're patient with them. You're pulling one at a time, and you should have no problem. One thing, uh, one other thing I'd like to note is the cell next to the merchant that we're going to be depetrifying, as I like to call it, actually has a uh, petrified dragon bone inside, which is what you use to upgrade your boss weapons. You can actually upgrade the boss weapons to plus five, and actually it increases the damage output slash special characteristics of those weapons 
quite drastically. So whenever you find a petrified dragon bone, make sure that you keep it because it is very, very valuable. And you will actually need the Bastille key for that cell next to our petrified man. Our very sexy petrified man. He was actually sexier before you, uh, you de-petrify him, but I digress. Um, you do need the Bastille key, which you get access to later on in this level. I didn't actually include it in the video. But you can see him there in the corner. I'm actually just going to, to leave you guys here, uh, show you some of the inventory that he has as of right now. I haven't defeated every boss in the game. I have bought a few of the boss weapons. I do not know if there's there's boss weapon merchants later on in the game. All I know is the weapons that this guy sells or trades are extremely sexy and actually are, are pretty damn good uh, depending on what your build is. So it's definitely something to keep in mind. And the best part about it is you can access him pretty damn early. As you saw, the only real um, yeah. challenge you're going to come up against is those ruined yeah. sentinels. I guarantee you. The last giant, the pursuer, the, the three skeleton lords, the dragon rider. Simple, simple boss fights. Um, the only challenge you're going to come up against is those ruined sentinels. But you can access this guy really, really early on and get access to some some great weapons so uh i hope you guys enjoyed the video i hope you found it useful like i said i'll try to include waypoints in the description if you've reached some of these areas uh previously and don't feel like listening to me talk and derp around for uh 15 minutes when you already know uh where certain things are so i'll try to do that as well like i said hope you enjoyed the video uh, i hope you're enjoying dark souls 2 um, and most importantly, I really hope you are enjoying life, and I will see you in the next Dark Souls 2, everybody. Take care now.